angle properties of a circle. If you take a look on the circle on which we have produced three points A, B and P, then we take look at the point A which is right here and the point B. There are two ways we can go from A to B. Either we can go the shorter way like following this path from A to B. This is called arc of the circle from A to B or it is known as arc A B and we put a circular sign there. That's called the minor arc because that's the smaller path we can go from A to B. That's why it's called minor arc. But if we go from A to B using the longer path passing through that point P, that is called the major arc. So if we divide the circle in two portions for between points A and B, then the smaller portion of the circle is called minor arc and the bigger portion of the circle is called major arc. Now the angle properties of circles state in the first property that the angle made by an arc at the center of a circle is double of the angle made by the same arc at a point on the circle. So let's consider this minor arc AB. Now this is the center and if we draw an angle, if we draw a straight line from A to the center of the circle and we draw a straight line from B to the center of the circle, they both meet at point O and this angle is called the central angle made by the arc AB. Now what this property states that if we make an angle by the arc at the center, that must be twice of the angle if the same arc was to make an angle at point P of the circle. Now this point P is on the circle. It's not the center. It's on the circle. And if we join A to P and we join P to B, then the angle made at P is X and angle made by the same arc at the center is twice. That's why we call it 2X. So if angle made at point P was 50 degree, then what should be the angle made at the center of the circle by the arc AB would be 100. It's always double. The second property states all inscribed angles by the same arc at different points on the circle are equal. So let's again if we take the arc AB and there are two points. Here is a point P and here is another point Q. If this arc is again named as AB then let's take a look when this arc A is making the angle at P then this is the angle that is made by the arc AB because the arc AB is this and this is making this angle at point P. Let's call this angle as X1. And if the same arc was to make another angle at another point Q of the circle, then let's make that angle. This angle here and this angle here. You can see that the arc didn't change. The arc is still the same. It's only the point on the circle that is changed. So if it makes an angle here, let's call it x2. Then what this property says is that x1 is equal to x2. Because what property is saying is that as long as the arc remains constant, or I mean the arc is same, angle made by the arc at two different points of the circle is same. The reason is because if this is the center angle, if this is the central angle and let's say that this angle was 100, 
if this angle was 100 then what should be according to the first property then what should be this angle this angle should be 50 then because angle at the center is double than the angle at the circle and if as the arc is still same so if we change the point P with Q then the angle made at Q must also be half of the angle of 100 which is again 50 degree therefore the angle made by the same arc at two different points of the circle is equal and the third property is really it's an extension of the property number two that inscribed angles made by the semicircle is always 90 degree well to make it clear inscribed angle mean angle made by the arc at the at a point on the circle so inscribed angle made by the semi circle is always 90 degree now semicircle can only be made when one of the this line passes through it divide this line divides the circle into two parts then half of the circle is called semicircle so if we want to find out what a semicircle makes an angle at the at the point here let's call this AB now if you go along the circle then AB is like the semicircle is still an arc of the circle and how much angle it makes on the center of the circle on either side it's making 180 degree now if we take a point P on the circle that's P then join A to P and may join B to P as well then what should be angle here this is 180 this is 180 and 180 here that should be according to the first property if this is central angle is double then angle at the point of the circle so this should be 90 degree anyways so basically if we carefully examine all these three properties are uh, extension of one simple fact that angle at the center of the circle made by an arc AB is double of the angle made at point on the circumference of a circle. So let's apply these few uh, facts in questions and try to find some interesting unknowns. Here the question one is find x, y and z in the given figure of circle. Here ABC is a triangle all the vertices of this triangle lie at point on the circle so ABC are points on the circle join them and make a triangle now we want to find out X as you can see that BOC is 140 degree and AOB angle is 100 AOC which we want to find that is named as X so how much is the total angle on the center the total angle in one round is 360 degree therefore angle A O B plus B O C angle B O C plus C O A angle C O A means is equal to 360 degree means 140 plus 100 plus X is equal to 360 degree so this is 240 degree plus X equal to 360 degree therefore X must be 360 minus 240 so that should be equal to 300 and so this is 120 degree therefore we have calculated this angle which is 120 degree because if it is 120 degree then 120 plus 6 
plus 100 plus 140 will make 360 degree which is an angle in uh, one revolution of a circle. Now we want to find out why. Why is a total angle on the B? We can see that here this side and this side mean OA is equal to OC. Reason both are radius of the circle. If both are radius of the circle then angles opposite to them must be equal. Therefore if this is Z then this angle is Z as well. So Z plus Z plus 120 degree must be equal to 360. Uh, sorry this must be 180 degree because the total angle inside a triangle is always 180 degree. Therefore 2z, z plus z is 2z plus 120 is equal to 180 and 2z is equal to 180 minus 120 that would give 200 uh, 2z is equal to 60 and z would be equal to 30 degrees. So z is known now and x we already have calculated and now we are going to find out what is value for y. If you take a look on this arc, if this arc, if you take a look at arc AC, this arc AC is equal to how much is the central angle made by the arc AC on the center that's 120 degree and angle made by the same arc at point B must be half of this angle so if the central angle made by the arc AC is 120 then angle made by the arc AC at point B which is called Y must be equal to 60 degree. So Y is equal to so here we can give an argument that angle made by arc AC is uh, double of angle made by AC at B. So Y is equal to 60 degree. Now we have another question here and here in this question we need to find out X and Y in the given circle where these two small lines, let's name them. Let's call it A, B, C, and D. O is the center. If AD and AB are equal, given AB and AD are equal. How are they given equal? These small equal signs they that's a symbol that these two sides are equal if these two sides are equal then angles opposite to equal sides are equal as well therefore this angle must be x as well and if this angle at b is x then what is according to the property third property bd is a diameter diameter always makes an angle of 90 degree on the circumference of a circle according to the third property because BD cuts the circle in half so that's a semicircle on either side and angle made by the semicircle or the diameter on the circumference of a circle is 90 degree therefore now we have X plus X plus 90 is equal to 180 degree. Come, uh, that's sum of 
all the angles inside a triangle is 180 degree. Therefore, 2x is equal to 90 degree and x is equal to 45 degree. So we have found out one of the quantities and the other quantity y can easily be found as well because here the angle is again 90 degree for the same reason and now we have one angle is 50 the other angle is y therefore 50 plus y so also y plus 50 plus 90 degree is equal to 180 degree so y is equal to uh, 180 minus 90 minus 50 so that should be equal to 40 degree therefore we can find the angle using the same property angle property of the circle now we have another question here in which we want to find out the length CD or AB of the rectangle but we know that the if this is center of the circle called O then OC is equal to 8.5 but this is half of the diagonal of the rectangle as well so if we extend it on the other side this must meet the other corner the opposite corner of the rectangle therefore the total length must be equal to 17 centimeter because from here to this point it's again radius and that's 8.5 cm again so if the total is 17 cm ad the width is already given that's 10 cm so from triangle from triangle acd acd what is pythagoras theorem pythagoras theorem this is 90 degree because by definition of rectangle angle at the corner is 90 degree therefore the hypotenuse square is equal to base square plus perpendicular square means AC square is equal to AD square plus CD square this means that AC is equal to 117 17 square equal to AD is uh, 10 square plus CD square is that we want to find out so 17 is 289 I guess and this is 100 plus CD square CD square is equal to 289 minus 100 this is means CD is equal to 189 square root.